The way people treat their pets is so much better than they treat themselves, in my observation. I know dogs that get massages and acupuncture horses. Horses get all sorts of treatment. Why? Because they function better. It's not just because the horse likes it, you know, when it feels good. It's like that horse can do its job better, whether it's running a race or doing something on the farm or barrel, you know, whatever you need the horse for. You know, they take really good care of them. But people will do all these things for their horses that they won't do for themselves. Hey, this is Nick Armstrong, and you are listening to the Founded in FOCO podcast. In every episode, we get a chance to talk to an innovative mover and shaker in our community. And today we are here with Julia. Julia, welcome to the show. Hello. I'm so happy to be here, Nick. Julia, tell us about your business. Well, my business is called Therapeutic Massage of NoCo. Pretty self-explanatory. That's where I am, and that's what I do. And uh, my tagline is for relief of chronic pain and stress so many people today <laughs> yeah that sounds like a, a, a thing that a lot of folks try to deal with i not me right because that's that's everybody else's problem but tell me about do you do you specifically do like organizational or like uh, a worker like type stress relief or is that just who naturally kind of comes to you that's naturally who comes to me um my business has just been full of a lot of high achieving, super busy folks who are very driven in everything that they do, it seems. And when you have that going for you, it's like listening to your body can start to fall to the wayside because this goal, 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 goal. And yeah, those are my people. What got you started on this? Well, I've I've been doing massage now for 17 years. So what initially started me out was um, two separate avenues. One, just a natural inclination. Um, I used to be like in the theater and doing things like that. And I was in marching band and choir and la la la. And kids would be so stressed out and so much pain. I was like rubbing shoulders on the band bus, you know, like that's just who I am. Uh, Tech week for a theater and stuff. Um, I used to do this thing where, after the tech rehearsal, I'd invite people over, I'd make them tea, and I had a marble rolling pin. I didn't know a darn thing about massage, but I would literally serve them a cup of herbal tea and lay them on my floor and roll them out with a marble rolling pin. <laughs> <laughs> so you could say that's how I got my start. <laughs> oh, man. Today, you'd have to call HR for something like that. But I think it's a great idea like th- that you got into this from such an early age. At what, uh, when you started, did you have just a natural uh, affinity for knowing who was stressed out and like their shoulders were hunched? Are there like visceral tells that you can, that you can identify for somebody who is stressed out? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I still use these as cues today. And so I want to add on the other part of that was through my own injuries and different things going on with my own body that when you're young, you can ignore. And then when you're older, they show up. So I didn't actually become a massage therapist until my late 30s. Um, So there's a huge gap there of me like, you know, being clueless about what was going on with my own body. So now to answer your question about the telltale signs, I mean, shoulders up to the ears, you know, people have a tendency to clench their hands. um, Even though they're smiling and their face is going like this, look at what someone's hands are doing. That can tell you a lot. Um, there are a lot of phrases like don't get your, you know, panties in a bunch or whatever, blah, blah, blah around the glute area that, yeah, you're tight there. You're tight here. You're going to be tight there. So, um, yeah, I, I could go on and on and on about this, the way people walk, they hold themselves. I'm terrible in airports because I'm just watching everyone. There are a lot of people self-consciously shifting in their cars right now as they're <laughs> white knuckling <laughs> on their way to wherever they're going. Uh, so uh, w- when it comes to uh, professionals and busy professionals, I-, I suspect we have a tendency to uh, defer self-care quite a bit uh, and to the point that it's detrimental. How, what is optimal in terms of like getting a massage or how often you should go in and, and either you check your stress or get get uh, some sort of like 
limberization or whatever else that you can assist with? Well, I always tell people that it depends on what you can actually sustain. So there are people who are like gung ho, like, yeah, I love this massage thing. I'm going to do it all the time. And, you know, those are the people like they come in a couple of times and you don't see again for another year until they're in such severe pain. So I recommend that people treat it like treat your body at least as well as you do your car. Most people don't. Like you have to get a regular oil change. You know, there's regular maintenance. Your brakes have to be done, you know, all those things. And yet for a body, we don't check in. So once a month is excellent. For a lot of people, busy professionals, particularly in the healthcare field, like doctors and dentists, um, every other week is really good because they are doing things physically like surgeons and dentists with their body where they need that break. They need that help on a more consistent basis. Yeah. And those repetitive tasks that you, the more repetitive, the more damage, the more you wear down those particular muscle corridors or, or tendons or whatever else. Um, so uh, is there something that is super egregious that we all do every day that we should stop doing immediately? Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, there is a list. But the first thing that pops into mind that just so many people do, you're sitting there on your laptop. Laptops, by virtue of the way that they are designed, are terrible for us. The keyboards attached to what you're looking at. So you're going to be hunched over. People say, oh, I, I'm trying to set up straight. I'm like, you can't. You're on a laptop. So the first thing I tell people to do is, um, especially if they don't have to be that mobile, cheap is fixed. Get an external keyboard. Just get an external keyboard. Prop your laptop up on whatever you possibly can to get it high enough. So I'm going to turn to the side because you get people sitting like Schroeder, you know, <laughs> at their laptop. And I used to think people were sitting there at like their kitchen table or on a counter. No, they're on their couch. They're in the friggin' bed. They're rolling over and clicking things on. Stop it. <laughs> they're they're, <laughs> that, they're comfy. Like they're cleopatra across the couch. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring and me they, another grape they, while I handle this spreadsheet. <laughs> exactly. And or is then, that just me? <laughs> right? No, right. Exactly. Um, yeah. And then they're wondering why their hips are off. Like not even just the things you would think like your neck or something going on with your wrist, wrist carpal tunnel, whatever. But like you might, well, I don't know, get an, a knee injury because of hip displacement, because of how you've been sitting. It, it sounds like there's an element of maybe like strength training or other things that go into this to make sure that your muscles are stabilized. So is, is, is uh, what you do like a first step and then you see somebody for strength training and then tag team back and forth? Or uh, who do you like to partner with when you're when you're doing your work to make sure it lasts? Actually, that is my favorite thing to do. I have a couple of clients that I do strength training with them coupled with massage. And they love it. They love it. They get their workout and then they get a massage right afterwards. It's like perfect harmony. Um, and I think that by, well, I know that by touching their body and having these regular sessions with them and asking them many questions about how they operate throughout their day. I mean, it shows up in their body. I can help them, but then they can learn how to help themselves. And then that encourages them as they start to feel better in their bodies. Then they naturally are like, oh, sitting like this sucks. Oh, let me get that stand-up desk. Let me get that external keyboard. Let me make sure I actually take breaks and do some physical activity. So I, that's, that's what I love to do, workouts combined with massage. Uh, when picking a, a, a massage professional, um, sometimes it can be like a like a personality match or the 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 encumbrances of the thing in the space, right? So all the accoutrements that you see, like the music or the sounds or the smells or other things like that. Um, what are the, all of those things sort of like that we have in mind about what a, a massage session should look like? Um, how many of those things are like? actually beneficial and how many of them are just for like window dressing and show and um which what what is a typical session with you look like well i just like to have a quiet very chill environment i think that that is critical 
um, where my office is located and the neighbors in my suite. It's all a pretty chill, nice, happy place. You know, these things do matter. If your environment is chaos, how can you expect to relax? How can the parasympathetic nervous system like engage? Be like, ah, you know, so and, and, and I, I like to have things smelling nice. So some people are like, oh, poo, aromatherapy, but, you know, your sense of smell brings about some of the strongest emotions. And I love it when people walk in and take a deep breath and go, oh, it smells really nice in here. Their shoulders immediately drop. So these things do matter. So I think quiet, clean, smelling good. And it doesn't have to look like the inside of the I Dream a Dream bottle, you know what I mean, or Aladdin or something. It just needs to be a space where people feel comfortable. When it comes to stressors and things that tend to set people off the most, is there something that you hear the most from from some of your clientele? Uh, things that are, you know, is there a common time of frame like a, like a tax season or other things like that that come into mind, or is it just? all over stress or some big project or something else like that. What are some major triggers that, uh, you know, folks could identify as flags of, oh, after this, I need to go get a massage. Oh, absolutely. It's so funny you said tax season because um, uh, back east, I have done chair massage at a number of like accounting firms and things like that during tax season. I've been hired for that. And certainly right after that, you know, the, the big bosses will come in. Um, it depends. It, it's, it's seasonal depending on a person's occupation. It's seasonal depending on a person's activity. There are people who go out for vacation and hit it so hard on vacation that they really need it when they get back. Um, I always, I, I often tell people, don't bother getting a vacation on the massage unless like the whole spa thing is like your vacation and what you're really into because you're going to bang yourself up. Get it when you get back. You know? um, or trap the flights, you know, just the act of traveling can do a lot of damage. So it's not just around um, your work. It can be around your vacation. It can be around a, a sport activity, you know, your your hobby. Do you have any tips and tricks for for getting the, the benefits of a massage to last longer than uh, what most people would experience? Well, two things I'll say about that. Um, one is often people will be suffering with something for months, perhaps years, and then expect me to solve it in one hour. Like, okay. <laughs> you know? So then that takes you back to like the regular maintenance. So if you want massage to actually have a residual effect, it works better if you do it on some sort of maintenance schedule and then you'll actually feel the effects they do compound over time but if you're just going to do it once every six months a year every couple of years eh, then it's not going to last um and also the exercise mobility movement if you're just getting the massage and then you're continuing to engage in all of your bad physical habits then not gonna last too long you know however i also understand time money whatever people can't do this all the time so on the day that you get your massage make sure it's a free day after that have it be a self-care day drink some tea go for a walk you know <laughs> watch a comedy relax let your body just settle into all the good things that just happen to it actually like receive that don't just go oh wow i feel great i'm gonna go do 10 things now it strikes me that what what you are describing is exactly how creatives and artists describe creative work right because it is the act of creating is fun but it is also work <laughs> yes. and so you have to sort of allow yourself the space and freedom to oh that was a really good figure drawing and now um i, I can't color it i can't ink it just yet but i'm going to set it aside for right now and move on because uh, my my hands are cramping up or whatever else, um, and and just admire what I have done so far. Uh, and what I have heard you say is that um, after you have 
sort of gotten this in this indulgence of like a massage, right? And I think a lot of us perceive this in the in the work world of like this is a this is an indulgence, this is a treat or whatever else. Um, just as you wouldn't eat an entire cake in one sitting. <laughs> you can't and you kind of have to appreciate the cake as you're eating it and then uh uh you know uh take a break <laughs> in between that and something else. Cause if you just go on and wolf on, you know, a burger or whatever else next, uh that's a recipe for uh bad things. Can um, I speak to that word indulgence? Yeah. Yeah, I, I will admit that's almost like a trigger word for me because it's maintenance for your body. Um, the way people treat their pets is so much better than they treat themselves, in my observation. I know dogs that get massages and acupuncture horses, horses get all sorts of treatment. Why? Because they function better. It's not just because the horse likes it, you know, and it feels good. It's like that horse can do its job better, whether it's running a race or doing something on the farm or barrel, you know, whatever you need the horse for, you know, they take really good care of them. But people will do all these things for their horses that they won't do for themselves. For themselves, they call it an indulgence. For the horse, it's necessary. For the dog, it's necessary. So I would really like to take that word um, pamper, that word indulgence, all those sort of things out of massage. That's why I named my business Therapeutic Massage of NoCo, because certainly if you want to just bliss out and relax, and for some people that is therapeutic, you know, but we are talking about all the systems of your body and the functioning of your, your body on many different levels. I absolutely love that approach. And it's just one of those things that uh, it's performance tuning, right? So if you want to be uh, optimize your productivity or optimize your creativity or anything else like that, you can't start from a, a negative. You have to start from a, a, a place of rest, a place of uh, being <laughs> in good form, um, strength, mentally and physically. Um, yeah. And if you're tense, you know, it's, it's not a good start to your, your creative process, your work process. Um, so what do you see as the solution for, and this is a big question, right? So, um, what do you see in Northern Colorado as the methodology for getting folks out of that mindset of, you know, the massage is an indulgence massage is a, you know, this into, it is a performance tune. It's a, it's maintenance that is, you know, required, you must do this in order to stay in top form? That is a great question because I'm still figuring that out. I moved here two years ago and I'm one of the reasons why I love what you're doing and I love about Founded in FOCO and places and this community where you can meet others and, and talk about these things and get a sense of where people are at. Because I see people here are very physically active. They're out and they're doing like all the things. And a lot of people are taking care of themselves, but maybe not knowing exactly what's going to reap the most benefits for them. So they try this thing, they go, oh, that didn't work. They probably they try that thing, they go, oh, that didn't work. So I would like to be able to answer your question. And honestly, I'm still figuring that out, how to make that connection, how to help people put those pieces together for themselves. I, I think focusing on the benefits for people who are working really hard and playing really hard. Like they went and did a 14er and um, they're also a dentist, you know, and how I can help them continue to be able to do both. Um, and especially that career point. I have actually... Um, heard from a friend of mine who is um, in the financial field and one of his clients has to retire early because they can't do their work anymore. It's just too painful. And this wasn't how things were supposed to go down. You spend all that money on school and they just didn't have all the information they need to have to maintain their body throughout their career. And so getting that message across, that it's not just relieving stress, it's not just relaxation, you know, it is 
tuning the body and helping people understand how to better do that for whatever they need. That sounds like an excellent segue into your Founded in FOCO talk. Um, tell us about what you will be presenting on and uh, who you hope shows up. Well, I am really excited about this. My talk, Slay Death Fatigue, um, is all about reducing pain and increasing productivity for all the things I just said. <laughs> um, it's going to be an interactive session. Usually people come in, they sit down, they hear a talk and stuff. I want people to stand up or sit and show them different things, stretches, exercise, little mobility things that they can do to give their body a break, to just shift what's what's happening so that they can get some fresh thoughts in there or just break the stress cycle they're currently in, get them breathing again, get their shoulders back down. I'm, I'm really excited to show them that this can be done very easily. You know, you don't have to hop in your car and drive to the gym or take a huge amount of time. Um, I want to show people that there are little things to get into the habit of and that these can be excellent pain and stress relievers just to stop those cycles. And of course, if you do that, you're going to increase productivity because people just work and work until they can't. And sure, maybe they got a lot done, but then that might uh, have an effect on their family, their communication with others, the rest of their life, actually. And then how are they going to feel when they start back up the next day? Are they going into their work day with dread or excitement? Is their body relaxed and their mind bubbling and they're feeling fresh and excited with new ideas? Or are they <clears throat> like this? So that's, uh, I'm really excited to have anyone uh, in my talk. And I know that that sounds like so broad, like everybody, come on, but we're all working, you know, we're, we're, we all have goals. We, we all have bodies, you know, I mean, I can't really exclude anyone from this. Um, but you know, I, I, I'll put a, a big star, a gold star for all the people who are on their laptops all day. Like, please come. It, it's a great promo too, because I think that there is so many of us who just have habits that just intrinsic, like we will hunch over our laptops at the end of the day, like to, to get one more project done or to start in on our creative work that we really wanted to do or some project. Or, um, and the ergonomics of what we are doing are just so incorrect, <laughs> but they're just <laughs> habitual. Um, so I, I love the approach of um, making it interactive, bringing people in, having people, um, you know, giving people tips on how to sort of break out of those habit loops that we've established that are ultimately detrimental to our productivity, our happiness, our, our social relationships, especially if we're enc encroaching on burnout territory. Um, there's so many ways that the simple shifts can uh, put us on a new path. And uh, I, I really do hope that a lot of folks show up into that room because uh, it's, it's such a vital skill, as you have said. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited and I'll be bringing some gadget things I use um, so that I'm not hunched over. Now, I'm not sitting at a computer all the time, uh, but I obviously I have to do that. And, you know, I've got my stand up desk. Well, there's certain things to do and configure to make your stand up desk work for you, because I've seen so many people with the desk up, they're standing and they're still hunched over. <laughs> like okay you know so uh, i'm i'm i have to figure out how to get it all there i think i need a, a wagon to drag all my things there so we will have things to play with and demos and moving around it'll be great do you notice that uh your professional clients uh the accountants the the cpas the the web programmers and things like that are they do they have any sort of like are they self-conscious about certain things like oh they you know carpal tunnel or like oh you know what i know i hunch over my laptop and they just I, they don't want to like I, I i hate to like generalize but i'm just curious is like do professionals come with their own set of quirks versus you know the run-of-the-mill uh people that come and and just want a massage <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It, that is such a great point because it does differ by profession. And um, 
early in my career, I worked at um, a men's salon and the clientele there, they, they didn't want to lose their edge. I had people say that to me like, oh, I've got a meeting where I'm discussing millions of dollars next. I don't want to be too relaxed. And I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> and then after a while, I, I, you know, I, it was like convincing them, like, just let me show you what this can, can, can do for you. This is going to help your state of mind. Uh, so there's certain professions, I will say, um, where I was located then uh, was, I saw a lot of bankruptcy lawyers. And um, that they were just an interesting clientele. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, put a little extra elbow into it. Just make me make me a little bit meaner today. That would be great. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, that what is it's a fascinating profession um what what do you wish that folks knew about uh massage therapy and what do you wish that um folks would tell their massage therapist when they when they show up wow okay i'm going to answer the second question first because i can only speak for myself but i want to know how you regularly move your body what are your habits? So I want to know your occupation. I want to know whether you're in your car a lot. I want to know if you have kids and what their ages are. Because if you've got squirmy toddlers that you're chasing around or come running and jump on you like you're the mommy or daddy tree, you know, <laughs> then your body's having to do certain things. You're not just lifting up 40 pounds. You're lifting up a 40 pound wriggly worm, you know? And people can tweak themselves out. You know, I, I used to, when I worked at the men's salon, um, I, I called it daddy back. You know, <laughs> guys would come in like, Ugh, you know. Um, so I, I want to know why you're there. Uh, the other part of the question what had to do with what you wish that folks knew about uh, massage therapy when they, they came in. Um, so they weren't maybe so self-conscious about, uh, you know, talking about their issues or, you know, uh, even even like body self-conscious or whatever else that they might, you know, those 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 things that they bring into the massage room that they maybe, you know, don't need to have with them weighing them down. Yeah. So obviously I'm not I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. However, I I've been doing this for 17 years. There probably isn't a, a body shape. I haven't seen in touch, you know, I, I wouldn't be a massage therapist if I were afraid to touch people or weirded out by bodies and things, you know, so, so, so just relax and know that I'm going to do things to your comfort level. You know, I've, I've massaged people fully clothed. You know, I only expose the area that I'm working on. Like, it's okay. This is the place where you are here to receive. People make excuses, oh, my shoes are on the floor. Oh, this was over there. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, I wish you didn't have to clean up after me. And I'm like, you are here to be taken care of. It is my job that you feel comfortable and safe and relaxed and whatever all the adjectives you can think of that allow you to breathe, close your eyes, and just hit the reset button for an hour. Like whatever you're coming in with, it's okay. That's that's just like the the big message. And I will do my best. And if I if I need to refer you to someone who can help you with whatever else is going on, I will. I have lots of friends, partners, people who know lots of things. I'm so happy to help people i just want them to come and be okay with just being themselves yeah that's one of the things i've always appreciated about the the physical therapists that i've known and worked with is that there are so many like folks just hand off clients back and forth to each other to like oh you need this this is a thing that you you have these shoulder issues or whatever like go to this person they'll get your strength trained and they'll, then they come back over here and do these things um and there's not really this like 
territorialism that you kind of experience in other professions. So it's yeah. it's greatly appreciated when we hear something like that. Um, Julia, uh, any last words of advice for a listener, um, things that they can do uh, right now to sort of uh, mediate their stress um, and, uh, before they schedule a massage with you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, let's see. I will say that closing your eyes and taking a moment to feel what is actually happening in your body. People say, close your eyes, breathe or whatever, but just, just check in, whether you go from the top down, from your, your feet up, check in to see what's happening. And if something feels like it's stuck or bothering you in one direction, try just moving the opposite direction. Your jaw is tight. Yawn, open your mouth a lot. Your shoulders are rolled forward, roll them back, or just like pretend you're doing like the backstroke. Just your body, your body is telling you what's happening. <laughs> and I think the number one thing people need to do is listen to it. Where can we find out more about you and your business? Um, and, uh, and, t uh, where can we learn more about how to take better care of our bodies? Well, I am on Facebook at Therapeutic Massage of NoCo. That's simple enough. Um, I have my website by the same name, uh, which is, it's up and running. It's being overhauled. Just letting you know some changes are coming in the future. So I will be talking more about all the different things that I do. So those are the two best places to find me right now is um, Facebook and just through my website. And I'm located centrally in Fort Collins, easy access to everybody. And if you're curious, just give me a call, shoot me a text. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions about massage, about exercise, general well-being. Um, we didn't get to it today. I'm, I'm I do a lot of things. I teach a couple of massage class. Um, just, I just want to help and educate. Well, Julia, thank you for so much for joining me on the podcast today. And uh, be sure to check out Julia's session at Founded in FOCO, uh, March 4th through 8th at the Fort Collins Senior Center and also around town with some various workshops and things like that. Um, and our goal is to turn you into a, a, a more refined version of you, the better, the 2.0 version of you. There's always a room for improvement and uh, it starts with uh, uh, hopefully being more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Julia, we look forward to seeing you there and, uh, and we'll see you there too. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm Nick Armstrong, and this is a Founded in FOCO podcast. For more great interviews like this one, join us at foundedinfoco.com.